Congratulations, Harry. At forward, first team all-star number 26, Joey Kupachka. Congratulations, Joey, and congratulations to all our award winners. Now, let's meet the starting lineups. For the visiting Temple University Owls at left defense number 81, Bladen Reed. At right defense number 7, Matthew Guinay. At left point, number 17, Michael Irie. At center, number 11, Hunter Ringwood. At right wing, number 98, Robert Polarski. And goalie, number 31, Joey Galitsky. The also are coached by Mr. Adam Calabrese. Now the starting lineup for your Westchester University Golden Rams. At left defense, number 17, Carter McCormick. At right defense, number 20, Owen Shepard. At left wing, number 11, Jacob Vitulo. At center, number 10, Emerson Emery. At right wing, number 21, John McEwen. And in goal, number 24, Chad Summerman. The Rams are coached by Jeff Boperlin. And now if you rise, remove your caps and face the flag for the playing of our national anthem. A late start time won't stop us from more playoff hockey here from the Brigade Sports Complex in Annapolis. The number four seed Westchester Golden Rams set to take on the number five seed Semple Owls. The Owls won both matchups between the teams this season, but as we already saw in tonight's first game, the playoffs in McMullen Arena are a whole new animal. It's the Rams and the Owls coming up. Hello and welcome in to McMullen Arena at the Brigade Sports Complex. I'm Luke Milai. It's the Temple Owls set to take on the Westchester Golden Rams. The second matchup of two games here in the quarterfinals of the ECHA playoffs. We just saw William Patterson take down George Mason in overtime, hoping for another great game here with the four seed Rams and the five seed Owls and we're underway here in Annapolis. The Owls control early. It's Bladen Reed trying to backhand. McCormick pushes it ahead for the Rams. And quickly, Vitulo's tripped up. A penalty already held up in the first 10 seconds. A delayed penalty. The Rams have six on five. 
On the far side, it's McEwen getting it back to the point. Ripping one is Vitsulo. That one knocked off Galitsky and wide, and a quick penalty. 28 seconds in. The Golden Rams will go on the power play. It's Blade and Reed heading to the box for Temple. Westchester, a golden opportunity to start out this playoff game on top. And the Owls being tested very quickly. Whitaker gets it to the far side. Emery gets it inside to the outside. Shepard playing catch. Shepard in the high slot, looking for an avenue, tries a pass over to Joey Kubachka off his skate into the corner. Kubachka chases it down. Shepard to the near side, Whitaker. Whitaker fires one on net, deflected wide into the corner. Behind the net, it's Kubachka. 30 seconds gone by on the power play. Minute 25 to go. Kubachka, it's out of his reach, and he's not able to keep it in the blue line. The Rams are going to have to retouch. Kubachka into the slot. Kubachka wheels back. Behind the net. Up for Whitaker to Shepard. Shepard from the slot. His shot is saved by Galitsky. Rebound sits in front, and it'll be cleared just as far as the blue line. Shepard knocks it down, and Galitsky saves it. Under a minute to go on the power play for Westchester. 54 seconds on the Bladen Reed penalty. Kubachka goes to the far side. It's kept in by Whitaker. Working it behind the net. The Rams have dominated possession through this power play. 40 seconds to go on the man advantage. To Kubachka. Working against the Temple defense. Lost the puck. Back the other way is Bacheski. Bacheski chased down by Whitaker, but he burns a bunch of time. Only 22 seconds remaining on the Rams' power play. They're going to retreat back behind their own net. Give a lot of credit to C.J. Phillips from Temple on that play as well. And that one's knocked away. Creasy put it into the neutral zone, and it's whacked beyond the net of Zimmerman. Three seconds to go, and we're back to even strength. The Owls kill off an early... Westchester power play. It's Fatulo back the other way and a big collision. Reed, Creasy, and Fatulo all a part of it. These teams settling back in, trying to get into a rhythm in even strength hockey. And that one goes off the stick of Lane and back into the neutral zone. The Rams after a cover. Emery after it in, sends it in against Sauer. Now Sauer comes away with it for Temple. The Owls trying to control possession. Here's Barrett. Brandon Barrett flips it across over the stick of Bajetsky. Into the corner. Behind the net, it's Rudolph. Rudolph looked for Barrett. It swung on and missed. And Ganeo retreat to pick it up for the Owls before dumping it in. A quick change for the Rams as Lane will flip that one into the offensive zone. Spinning with it now is Carter. Back up to the point, sending one on net, deflection save, Galitsky. Behind the net, backhand save by the left pad of Galitsky. Ripping from the slot, that was a big shot from Tristan Ryan, didn't get all the way there. Just over three minutes gone by in this first period, Bacheski again, working to gain Temple possession. He's across the blue line, looking for Rudolph, knocked away from him. Smith comes away with it for the Rams. It's a two on one for Westchester. Smith fires well wide. Rudolph looking the other way for Temple. Tried to outlet it. Now he'll contain control. Under 16 minutes to go in period number one. It's the four seed Rams against the five seed Owls. You're in the second game of the night in the ECHA playoffs here from Annapolis, Maryland. The Rams have dominated possession early. Already had a power play. Got that 28 seconds into the opening period. It's Maglio ahead to Phillips. C.J. Phillips sends one on net. Saved easily by Zimmerman. Working from the quarter, spinning is Harmon. He'll flip it back to the opposite corner where McCormick's there to retrieve it for the Rams. Sauer flips it back in to the left of Zimmerman. He'll poke it with a stick. 15-15 to go in this first period. Still scoreless here from McMullen Arena. 
Stonefield able to get it away from McEwen. Now that long outlet pass picked off by Shepard, but he couldn't control it. Stonefield lost the puck. Back-to-back -back turnovers as Seaman brings it in. Seaman from the circle, saved by Galitsky. It's the Rams again with an opportunity to push the pace, losing his footing over on the far side, allows the puck to stay in the neutral zone. And McVeigh will just watch that one trickle in where Sauer goes back to get it for Temple. Fresh legs on the ice for the Rams. A five to one shot advantage for Westchester through the first five and a half minutes of play. It's Pelletier, they send it all the way down. It's an icing against Westchester. The Owls will have an offensive zone draw, something that Temple desperately needed at this point in the game. It'll be Ringwood on the draw for Temple. Kubachka in there for Westchester. And Kubachka's able to win it. Back to Pelletier, and he'll send it all the way around. Pilarski tries to spin a big collision at center ice. It was Kubachka and Pilarski. Pilarski's still coming up slow. And a turnover in front. The shot. Oh, what a move. And Galinsky got out to save it. Not sure if Harmon lost the handle. Regardless, it stayed out. That shot from the point saved by Galitsky. A massive opportunity for Jake Harmon in front of the net. Could not convert for Westchester. The shot totals didn't change. He must have lost the puck on the way in. Still a 5-1 to one advantage for Westchester. Whitaker tries to pull it back. It's ripped away by Gane, number seven on seven crime. Ringwood and Gane still going after it on the boards. And now when all the dust settles, the Owls will try and move the other way. Gane gets it for Irie. Michael Irie, the puck for the first time for the Owls. Stonefield sends it away from the dangerous Jacob Vatsulo. Always a creator in the offensive zone for Westchester. The team leader in assists with 19. It's Irie going the other way for Temple. And he loses possession. It was a one-on-five rush, and now... McEwen will try and do some of the same for Westchester. He'll launch that one, deflect it up into the netting and out of play. 13.01 to go in the first period here at McMullen Arena. Again, the second game of the ECHA playoffs. Navy the number one seed and Villanova the number two seed getting buys tonight. They will play tomorrow and the winner of this game will determine well, we'll play Navy. It's already been decided. William Patterson will play Villanova in the 5.30 game tomorrow. That one's in front, blocked in front. What a play by Gane. Didn't let it get through to Galitsky. Now ahead is Bachetsky. Ryan Bachetsky sends one in front, blocked on the way there. A great defensive play. It looked like McCormick got his body in the way. Barrett now for the Owls, wheeling into the slot. Brandon Barrett. To Reed, behind the net, McCormick pushes it along, and Shepard's the first one there for Westchester. Gane kicks it ahead. He'll keep possession, but the Owls had to retreat beyond the blue line to avoid offsides. They'll get fresh legs on the ice as Westchester tries to move it ahead. It's intended for Smith, picked off. Smith knocked it away from Sauer. And the Owls struggling to keep possession in their zone. It's Moran. Bacheski or Walker, pardon me, trying to bank it along, and now Moran will try and slow things down. Eight minutes into the first period, still scoreless here in Annapolis. Temple and Westchester. The four-seed Rams and the five-seed Owls. That one's picked off. Here comes Maglio into the slot. Maglio tries to backhand one up. It's deflected high into the netting, and we'll have a stoppage. Still five shots to one, Westchester advantage. That hasn't changed in a few minutes. 11.42 to go in the opening period. Time of possession's really been dominated by the Rams so far, but Joey Galitsky, the Temple goaltender, has been up to the task so far. Chad Zimmerman on the other side for Westchester. Again, he's only faced one shot. Hasn't had too much action. Gets some action there, able to cleanly save that soft shot from the point. Wheeling around is Phillips, able to try and keep it in. Back behind the net is Walker. 
Walker to the corner, it's Maglio. And a nice poke check, great job. And that puck is stolen away. The Rams trying to move the other way, it's Whitaker. Whitaker, and the Rams go offside. Kubachka got a little beyond that blue line, tried to keep that right foot back. Instead, it'll come out to the neutral zone. A game that's had such a fast pace through the first couple of minutes, a few stoppages now as of late. 11-16 to go in the opening period, still scoreless. Coming away with that faceoff for Temple was Blake Richmond. Now it's Richmond with the puck. The lefty will get it away to Jacob Creasy, playing catch with Stonefield. And the stick of James Owen breaks. He's got to get back to the bench where Polarski will come on for him. The Owls able to avoid some disaster there. But some impressive forecheck from these Rams has kept Temple on this side of the ice most of the night. And again, nearly another turnover. Battling for the puck loose. It'll be taken and sent in by Seaman. And that'll allow Westchester to get some clean, eggs out, clean legs out there. Sending it into the middle off the stick of Polarski. First to get there is Creasy for Temple. Trying to work by Robbie Moses, and it looked like he might have got a piece of the padding separating the glass next to the benches. He comes away fine. McVeigh trying to push it ahead for Westchester. Knocked away by Creasy. And McEwen tried to push it up the ice, had the stick smashed out of his hands. And I think we're going to get a slash against the Owls. Doesn't get more clear cut than that. McEwen going for the puck. Creasy took a whack at the stick. And it's already the second power play for the Rams in the opening period. 10.08 to go in that opening period. Still scoreless. It'll be Emery on the draw for Westchester, able to get it back, but the Owls able to clear it all the way down where Zimmerman will wait for it. Penalty the penalty against Jacob Creasy for slashing. And it looked like almost a bit of a pick play there on the blue line, and in the end it results in an offsides. It was Peltier that was beyond that blue line as the Rams tried to push it into the zone. Only 15 seconds off the clock so far on the man advantage for Westchester. 1.45 to go on the power play. It's Emery winning the face off for the Rams. McEwen with it. McEwen back to Peltier. He'll send one on net. Miss wide. Back out to the point. The Rams trying to be patient. It's Harry Lane over to Emery. Back to Lane in the high slot. Lane rips one on net. Blocked in front. Might have got a piece of McEwen for the Rams. And now it's cleared out. A good effort from Nolan Sauer to get it into the neutral zone. A minute 20 to go on this power play. And the Owls will clear it all the way down. Temple does a good job against the number one power play unit of Westchester. The Rams sending out another set of legs for the final minute and three seconds of this man advantage. Again, their second power play of the period. Had one just 28 seconds into this game, and now number two about halfway through is Galitsky able to save that shot. But Chetsky bangs it along the glass, and it's cleared out by Maglio. 45 on the clock, being shouted from the Westchester bench. 45 seconds on the power play clock. 8.45 to go in the first period. Puck fought for in the corner, and again, Temple able to take it away. It's Bocetsky slinging it all the way down, where Whitaker will have to go chase it. 25 seconds on the Westchester power play. 8.30 to go in the first period. Here's Whitaker. Into the zone, Whitaker weaving, lost the handle. Stonefield with a nice poke check, and now Whitaker gets laid up against the glass. Inside, oh, what a play by Galitsky to make the save on Harmon. Galitsky went down, he lost his helmet on the, in the process. A whistle abruptly stops play. Still four seconds on the Westchester power play, but Joey Galitsky got hit on the way in as Harmon went for the shot. Not intentional by any means. But you saw his helmet come flying off. You're not going to let him play without the helmet. 
and Harmon's going to get punished for it, hitting Galitsky on the way in on his shot. Harmon will go to the box. We saw quite a bit of penalties in the first game between William Patterson and George Mason. This is already the third penalty, and now make it fourth as Stonefield is heading to the box for Temple. So Stonefield will go in for two. Harmon's in the box right now for Westchester for two as well. So for the next four seconds, it'll be four on three for Westchester. And then when Jacob Creasy comes out of the box for Temple, we'll go to four on four hockey for a minute and 56 seconds. Galitsky still trying to gather himself back over at the net. Eight twelve to go in the first period. Scoreless between Temple and Westchester. Thank you so much to everyone watching and listening along here to the ECHA playoffs, the second quarter final game of the night. Got a late start, but the intensity's been high. Westchester controlling a lot of possession. Seven shots to just two Temple shots. It'll be Emery on the draw for Westchester. Rudolph wins it for Temple, and the Owls will clear it out. So Creasy's out of the box now. It's five on five hockey. Stonefield and Harmon are in the boxes for two minutes each. So instead of four on four, it is five on five. Even strength with those two in the box regardless as Vitulo will send it behind Galitsky for Westchester. Gane trying to push it away for Temple. Into the corner now. Back out to the slot. Sending one deflected high up off the glass. Left the stick of Tristan Ryan. Ryan again will send one from the point. Saved by Galitsky. Rebound sitting in front. Able to control it just enough before Matt Gane will bank it off the glass where Shepard's waiting for it. 7.23 to go in the opening period. Bladen Reed back to get it for Temple. Gane nearly turned it over. McEwen was right there with the active stick. And he's right back in Gane's face. This time Gane gets it away. And waiting for it is Harry Lane. Lane, one of two first team All-Stars named for Westchester before the game. Joey Kubachka, the other one for the Rams. The Owls did not have an All-Star named before the game. These teams separated by just four points in the standings this season. The Rams in fourth place with 23. The Owls in fifth with 19 points as that one's iced all the way down. And it'll earn the Owls an offensive zone draw. Again, when these teams met in the regular season, Temple took care of business twice. The Owls won four to two at home in November and then went on the road to Ice Line and won on January 28th, four to one. But even with those two wins, this is a solid Westchester team. A good matchup in store tonight. 6.30 to go in the opening period. Still no score. Batted into the middle. McVeigh trying to push it ahead. He's being knocked around by a few owls before Sauer will control behind the Temple net. It's taken away by his teammate Hunter Ringwood. And now Temple again working against an aggressive Westchester forecheck. They are all the way in the Temple defensive zone. Polarski ahead and the Owls, a miscommunication. Irie went in ahead of Polarski. It's an offsides against the Owls. Six oh five to go in the first period here at McMullen Arena in Annapolis, Maryland, the home of the Navy Midshipmen, the number one seed in the ECHA playoffs, hosting the entirety of the ECHA playoffs over the next couple of days. Tomorrow, two semifinal games on Sunday, the championship game at two. Is Galitsky able to cover that one up? The pace slowing down to this game. Again, a high pace early on, a ton of opportunities for Westchester and things have sort of evened out now. It's Tyler Carter on the draw 
for Westchester against C.J. Phillips for Temple. Carter wins it for Westchester. His shot is blocked before it got in there. And a referee took a shot from the puck from Creasy. And now the Owls will go the other way. It's Maglio stopping, trying to fire. But Werner did a good job to get his stick on it and knock it away. And now he'll push it the other way. Werner ahead for Carter. Walker trying to pursue it for Temple. He'll be the first one there. Walker for Stonefield, and Walker took a big hit. Maglio to the red line, tries to push it ahead to Phillips. Instead, it'll be taken by Shepard for the Rams, and Walker hits him a bit after the play. This game heightening in physicality as we're approaching five minutes to go in the first period. Pushing it in now is Harmon. He lost the puck, and... It looked like he was tripped up. That's what the referee saw as well. With 5.01 to go in the first period, it's the third Temple penalty, the third power play for Westchester. They're 0 for 2 so far. We have seen one Westchester penalty, but there was a corresponding Temple penalty. So overall, it's the fourth owl to enter the box, the third time Westchester's had the man advantage because of it. This time, it is Blake Richmond heading to the box. The Owls again with four men out there. And up on the scoreboard, they send Brian Lane's number to the box for Westchester. A discussion in front of the Westchester bench. If that's accurate up on the board, this will be four on four hockey. The Golden Rams trying to figure out what the case is. And the referee signaling to the bench. This is four on four. The door's wide open. It was Lane's number up on the board, but it'll be Harmon going in to serve the two minutes. So two minutes on each side. So still just two Westchester power plays. For the second time in this game, we have a man on each side in the box for two minutes. But this time it'll be four on four hockey. Last time it was five on five. Again, 5.01 to go here in the first period. The second quarterfinal matchup of the ECHA playoffs. This one between the four seed Westchester Rams and the five seed Temple Owls. Back into the slot, Sauer with a shot and it's gloved out of the air by Zimmerman. It's only the third shot that Zimmerman has faced in this game. But he flashed the leather right there. A minute 45 to go on the four on four. 446 to go in the opening period. Creasy battling over there. It's kicked away. A nice effort there to get that puck out. Give the credit to Lane for Westchester. Stonefield ahead. Stonefield takes a whack from Whitaker, still pushes ahead, gets it behind the net before a falling Polarski, unable to handle it. Back the other way comes Whitaker for Westchester. Makes a move on Bacheski, Whitaker inside. Oh, and he couldn't get the shot away. Galitsky got from left to right. Whitaker couldn't get it away. Another Golden Rams opportunity with a big chance. And another penalty as Polarski's pushed to the ice. This one should get Temple on the power play for the first time. Harmon's already got the door open for his teammate, Harry Lane. Two men in the box for Westchester, one for Temple. Boy, there's a lot of open ice out there with three men in the box. Four men out there for Temple, three for Westchester. It's the first power play of the game for the Owls. They go on the man advantage for the first time with 4.04 to go in the first period. A game that shots wise has been dominated by Westchester, nine to three shot advantage. Possession is certainly evened out. Here's McCormick the other way. Westchester trying to get a rush. McCormick can't put it in front. Julian Rudolph was there for Temple to knock it away. Four on three for the next 50 seconds. Then it'll go five on four for Temple. There's still a minute 40 on the penalty against Harry Lane. In front, it's Ringwood into the slot. Tried to drop it off. 
It's knocked away by the right skate of Emery before he'll kick it on down. Galitsky over to get it for the Owls. 3.30 to go in a scoreless first period. Certainly a different pace to the first game we saw tonight. A 5-4 William Patterson win over the George Mason Patriots as Hunter Ingwood sends that one in. It's caught out of the air by Zimmerman who desperately wanted to give it away to a teammate, but rather than risk any turnover, just what likely was the smart thing in that scenario and holds on to it. Both goaltenders have been solid so far. Joey Galitsky for Temple has saved all nine shots he's faced. And it's been Chad Zimmerman saving just three shots, but he saved all three. Overall, it's still scoreless here at McMullen Arena. Stonefield for Temple in the high slot. Wines gives it off for Walker. Stonefield sends one on net. Another glove stop for Zimmerman. It's the third straight shot he's snagged out of the air. Only four seconds remain on the four on three. Then we'll go to five on four for Temple. A minute and one second left on the Harry Lane penalty. So out of the box comes Harmon, and out of the box it came nearly right to him. Fortunately for Temple, Blake Richmond was out of the box at the same time. Otherwise, that could have been danger for Westchester. 45 seconds to go on the lane penalty. It's five on four for Temple. Westchester 0 for 2 at the man advantage tonight. Temple working on its first opportunity. 34 seconds on the power play. 2.36 to go in period number one. Barrett. Working into the slot. Barrett backhands one just wide of the net. And it's whacked off the backboards by Carter. Didn't get much farther than the corner. Maglio stumbles but now controls. The Owls have the puck 15 seconds on the power play. Inside, oh, Barrett missed the net wide. Sending that one, it's deflected high over the glass. Seven seconds on the lane penalty. Maglio spinning with it to Barrett. Barrett working into the slot, fires it wide again. Rebound shot, and didn't get all the way there. It looked like Peltier blocked the shot from the far side. Not sure if it was on net or not. Zimmerman had just been on the other side, so leaving a bit of the net exposed. Peltier there to make sure his goaltender was out of harm's way. 1.40 to go in the opening period. Five on five hockey. Nine shots for Westchester, five for Temple. The four seed Rams and the five seed Owls. Winner will move on to take on the number one seed Navy midshipman tomorrow night. Owen across out of the reach of Phillips on the far side and now Westchester will take control. A long outlet pass onto the stick of Vitulo against Sauer, Vitulo sends it deflected wide into the corner. Batulo the first there for Westchester, back to the point. Sending one on net, Galitsky saw it all the way, calmly pulls in the rebound. Save number 10 for Joey Galitsky, comes into this game with a 9.08 save percentage. A 3-5-2 record for Temple, allows a little over three goals per game. He's been up to the task so far with 61 seconds remaining in period number one. And now we'll have to do that face off over again. It's Emery in there for Westchester and it's Ringwood for the Owls on the draw. Ringwood's got the height, but Emery got the puck. That shot high from the slot from Vitulo. Missed everything, went into the glass. Westchester keeps control until it's stolen away by Polarski, who will bank it along the glass into the Westchester zone. Moses back to get it for Westchester. He'll try and advance the puck ahead. A series of passes tape to tape. It's Fatulo now for Westchester. That shot from Moses goes well wide to the right. 32 seconds remaining in period number one. Polarski spins away from trouble. Polarski tries to backhand it ahead. He gets it beyond the blue line, but that's as far as the Temple possession goes as Fatulo moving it the other way. Sitting at the blue line, now it's Ringwood with it for Temple. 13 seconds to go in a scoreless period, number one. Ringwood sends it down off a of Westchester stick, and it'll have to be covered up by Zimmerman with 6.6 .6 to go. It may not amount to anything, but 
what Ringwood just did, earns the Owls another offensive zone draw, just enough time to get something going with 6.6 .6 to go. Simmerman again, as he's done most of the night, all wise plays covering it up to avoid harm's way as that one came to a shot from the circle to flex out of play, only 3.2 now to go in period number one. They'll do it again to the left of Simmerman. Again, 3.2 on the clock in a scoreless first period. The puck sits in the circle. It'll be cleared away. And that will do it for the first period. The number four seed Westchester Golden Rams and the number five seed Temple Owls scoreless after one. And just a reminder to everyone watching, restarting the software in between periods, trying to limit as much buffering as possible here for the ECHA playoffs. So if the stream cuts out, don't worry. We'll be back within the 15 minutes for period number two. We'll be back in 15. It's the Westchester Golden Rams and the Temple Owls. It's the ECHA playoffs. Twenty minutes in the books. We're back here at McMullen Arena in Annapolis, Maryland, for the second quarterfinal game of the ECHA playoffs between the number four seed Westchester Golden Rams and the number five seed Temple Owls. A scoreless first period here at McMullen Arena as the team sets to switch sides. Westchester had ten shots in that opening period, just five for the Owls. Two power plays for Westchester, one for Temple. They both went scoreless. Give all the credit to Joey Galitsky in net for Temple and Chad Simmerman in net for Westchester. They've saved all the 15 combined shots they face. Quickly out of the intermission. Now it's Lane. Lane will wind and fire. Galitsky saw it all the way and pokes it into the net. Seventeen seconds into period number two, an offensive zone draw for Westchester. It'll be Emery against Ringwood. Emery wins it for Westchester. Lane will send one on that, blocked away by Irie. Ringwood pokes it ahead. Polarski does the same. Polarski chasing after it for Temple. Robert Polarski will rip one into the net of the glove of Zimmerman. Zimmerman saw it all the way, snagged it out of the air. His sixth save of the night. Possibly one of his toughest. It's McCormick, Moses, Kubachka, Whitaker, and Harmon out there for Westchester. Ringwood, Irie, Creasy, Stonefield, and Reed into the game for Temple. Kubachka wins the draw for the Rams. And it's Harmon pushing it along the blue line before Creasy dumps it back in for Temple. Slowly sliding in on net as Ringwood knocks it away before he's dislodged in the puck by McCormick. Nice outlet pass. Back the other way now is Moses. Robbie Moses drops it off for Harmon. Into the slot. Oh, an offline pass intended for Whitaker. He would have been one-on-one -on -one with Galitsky if it was on his tape. And instead, it's cleared away by Temple. The Owls trying to get a change. Westchester earlier on a Temple change was quick to outlet the puck ahead. This time, Temple back. 
Puck knocked away by Walker, now pressed up against the boards. A bunch of bodies there, Whitaker chasing it for Westchester, but Rudolph gets it ahead. Brandon Barrett trying to get ahead of the pack. Barrett inside, couldn't get a shot off. Barrett keeps control, backhand shot right into the gut of Zimmerman. An impressive individual effort from Brandon Barrett, but the Westchester defense up to the task. 18-22 to go in period number two. Still scoreless here in Annapolis. The winner of this game will move on to the semifinals tomorrow night to take on the number one seed Navy Midshipmen. That'll be at 8.30. It's Rudolph for Temple. Tries to center one in front, cleared away. And Sauer back to get it for Temple. Buczewski has it bounce over a stick, pushes it beyond lane, but Carter, the first one there, to retrieve for Westchester. Quick outlet here, Smith, and he's pushed up against the Temple bench by Buczewski. Temple will gain possession over two minutes into the second period. Turnover there for the Owls. It's Smith who subsequently turns it right back over. Neither team has really had too good of a handle on possession, too good of an opportunity. They've been few and far between here in quarterfinal game number two after there were nine combined goals in game number one between William Patterson and George Mason. Buczewski to the far side, it's Rudolph. He'll rip one into the glove of Zimmerman. That left hand has been busy for Chad Zimmerman. And he's made every play he's had to. That's his 10th save of the night. There's almost a bit of an anxiousness at this point in the game with no goals being scored. You don't want to be the team that lets up the first goal. You might play a bit more defensive. Certainly not seeing either team get many odd man rushes the other way. Maglio out there on the four check for Temple. It'll be spun around by Peltier. And now it's taken. Here come the Rams. Moving in is McVay. Tries to send it in front out of the reach of Seaman. Reed behind the Temple net. Gets it ahead to Maglio, pushes it up. Phillips trying to move it ahead just over the stick of Walker. Tries to drop it for Ganae, an impressive effort by Seaman to knock it away. Gaffney darting over to the puck for Westchester. He's able to gain possession initially for his team and then Reed, the lefty defenseman, sends it back into the neutral zone. Off the stick of Emery, retreat, getting ahead to the puck for Westchester. Couldn't come away with it against two Owls. Ganey, nearly four minutes into this second period, still scoreless. Maglio, dislodged from the puck. It's Phillips centering one in front. It was knocked away. Stonefield, across for Creasy. It went beyond the blue line. The Owls will have to touch back up. Back to get it is Tristan Ryan for Westchester. Ryan surveying his options as each team gets some fresh skaters out there. Ryan surely taking his time with 15.50 to go in period number two. Advances it ahead for Emery who stumbles but's able to get it behind Galitsky. A centering pass, no one home and Stelasio controls now for Temple. Joe Stelasio pushing it ahead, chasing after in the corner. He's tripped up by McEwen. The Owls bench wanted something. They're not going to get it. Creasy with it. Takes a big hit over the Westchester bench. Here are the Owls. It's Stelasio sending one wide of the net. That one sent all the way down. It was deflected to no ice, and Galitsky came way out of the blue paint to get it. But in turn, it got possession for Temple. Now it's loose in front. It's Whitaker. Whitaker tries a centering pass into the slot. Turning and shooting is Ryan. Rebound shot saved by Galitsky. Oh, he got to the left side to make the play to keep this game scoreless. Save number 13 for Joey Galitsky. A long outlet pass. It's Kubachka. Two on one. Into Whitaker. Oh, he missed him. 
Another missed opportunity for the Rams. It was Kubachka and Whitaker two on one. Kubachka's pass was just a bit behind Brennan Whitaker. That one slammed off the backboards where Galitsky's waiting for it. Westchester can't touch the puck. They'd be off sides. And moving ahead is Moran. Polarski will send it around. It's Irie and Lane battling. Lane comes away with it for Westchester. Westchester looking for these long outlet passes. One connects with Harmon. Harmon moving in. Harmon spinning. Harmon back up. The shot from Kubachko well wide. Lane waiting for it. Polarski lost a stick. It's five on four for the moment. Polarski now back into the play for Temple. Whitaker behind the net. Sauer the only one there. He'll push it ahead for Temple and back into the neutral zone. Ringwood sends it near the front of the net and diving out to avoid any issues is Chad Zimmerman. That's something that he's done well all night. Any sense of danger, Zimmerman has been eager to jump on that puck. 13.43 to go in period number two between the four seed Rams and the five seed Owls. The second ECHA quarterfinal game. Westchester only had four guys out there before Tristan Ryan will head out there to make it five on five. No penalties here in the second period, knock on wood, after quite a few in that opening period. It's McCormick pushing it ahead for Westchester. Waiting for it now is Ryan. Pushed up against the boards by Reed for Temple. It's turned over. Barrett trying to control for the Owls against a couple of Westchester defenders. Offsides nearly called, but Westchester has the puck. Galitzi again out with it. Able to make the pass over to Reed. That one hits off the back side of the cage. Not much danger as now Ganey will control for Temple. 13 minutes to go in the second period. Still no score between the Rams and the Owls. That one's turned over. Moving in is Werner. He's knocked off the puck by Ganey. And now he's down holding his knee. We're going to get a whistle. Werner holding that left knee. 12.50 to go as the trainer's out to see him. In full speed, didn't look like anything out of the ordinary, but Werner goes down in a heap, and now he's being tended to as each team will now try and stay warm, getting some skaters out there on both sides. 12.50 to go in period number two, still scoreless. It was Westchester dominating possession early. Temple taking back a bit of control here in the second, but it's been mostly even. A game that got a late start thanks to a hectic first quarter final game between number three William Patterson and number six George Mason. That game went to overtime. William Patterson won five to four. Adam Marvin had a hat trick for the Pioneers in that game. The player of the year in the ECHA got the job done on the biggest stage. So the Pioneers move on. They'll take on the Villanova Ice Cats tomorrow night here at 5.30. And again, the winner of this game will take on Navy right here at 8.30. Navy, the number one overall seed. And just to give updates, Werner still on the ice, being tended to by a few trainers now. Some skaters going over to check on him. The trainers again over. Down along the near corner. Navy hosting the playoffs this season. The number one overall seed, 40 points in ECHA play. That was 15 more than any other team in the league this season. Two teams in Westchester and Temple trying to make some changes up top. It was Navy and William Patterson who were in the championship game last season. As Werner up to his skates, not able to put any pressure on that left leg, but getting some help off the ice. Harry Lane and Michael McVay, the two Rams out there trying to help him to the side, where now 
Some others from the outside will try and help Werner. Still no pressure put on that left leg. And now they're able to at least carry him to a bench or attempting to at least on the side as the men on the ice trying to rec recollect themselves and get ready to get back into what's a high paced playoff game. But always the health of all the players comes first. So it's good to see so many tending to Werner, getting him over to a bench. And that's where he will sit out of play for further examination. The puck will now be dropped at center ice. 12.50 to go in period number two, 0-0. Zero, zero. 13 shots for Westchester, nine for Temple. The Rams trying to push the puck ahead and now instead going the other way was Walker for Temple, but a nice defensive stop in the back for the Rams. No one really controlling a neutral ice and now it's Maglio coming away with it for Temple. A loose stick corralled and five on five hockey still Someone trying to grasp possession here in this second period, gain a bit of control as Creasy's outlet pass misses. It goes all the way down the ice for an icing. A Little bit of extracurriculars near center ice. Between a couple of members on each side, it was CJ Phillips and Gordon Delano locking horns in the neutral zone as they waited for the puck to return. Pardon me, Michael McVeigh over there with C.J. Phillips. 12.04 to go in period number two. The Rams win the faceoff. Atulo fires wide left of Galitsky. One of the higher quality shots we've seen in period number two. Now that one from the point is deflected. Galitsky was able to handle it. No rebound given out by Galitsky. And we'll have another offensive zone draw for the Rams. Ringwood on the draw against Emery for the Rams. Ringwood wins it for Temple. Sauer tries to send it around. It only gets as far as the point where Peltier's there. Peltier back in, it finds Vitulo on a tough angle, centering one in front, in front of the net, Galitsky falls on top of it. Joey Galitsky, a brick wall in front of that net, keeping this game tied. Save number 15 for the Temple Netminder. Into the corner. It's Moran for Temple. The Owls have been stuck in their own zone. It's Westchester trying to assert themselves, and they certainly have over the last minute. That one sent wide of Galitsky's cage. Sauer controlling, sends it at least into neutral ice. Temple sure needed that. And now Polarski, the first to get there for the Owls. In a sequence that was dominated by Westchester, the Owls trying to take advantage. Centered in front for Moran. He was held off. Here's Sauer flipping one back towards the net, wide left. Polarski back up. Moran sends one in front and deflects just wide. Not sure who got the stick on it. Iriel rip one high over the net. Moran centers and the Owls starting to keep control. Here's Rudolph. Rudolph had his stick hit on the shot, didn't get any mustard on it. And with under 10.40 to go, it's Fatulo chasing after the puck for the Rams. He's unable to come up with it. And now that one's taken in by Galitsky, 10.25 to go. Sixteen saves for Joey Galitsky, nine for Chad Zimmerman on the other side. Galitsky again a bit more action in front of him, but overall both guys have done an impressive job saving everything they've seen in the highest pressure situation of the season, the postseason. Each guy has 
played their best so far. Under 10 and a half to go in period number two. It's Westchester with control in the corner. Reed for Temple trying to knock it away. Instead, it's Kubachka for the Rams coming away with it. Joey Kubachka tries to feed it behind. Gine with a nice defensive stand. He'll take away the puck for Temple. Barrett flying along the near side. Brandon Barrett goes off sides. It was... Buczewski, who got a bit ahead of the blue line, taps his chest saying, my bad. As we're exactly halfway through this second period, 10 minutes to go in period number two. The four seed Golden Rams and the five seed Owls. That one from the neutral zone goes to the slot. It's Barrett, gives it off. That shot saved by Zimmerman. Got out there with the right pad. There's a turnover, here's Rudolph. Rudolph sends one wide of the net. Barrett turns it over, Kubachka with it now. Kubachka, the outlet to Harmon. Harmon working against Gane, sends it in front for Kubachka, deflected wide, taken by Buczewski right in front of the blue paint. And Kubachka took it away for a moment before Reed able to knock him off the puck, and Gane will move it ahead for Temple. Rudolph gives it to Buczewski. Ryan Buczewski lost it at the blue line. Back the other way come the Rams. A three on two if they hurry. And that pass is deflected away. Delano to the far side. It's McCormick. McCormick fires one on net. Ate up Galitsky a little bit, but he's able to swallow that puck in. Exactly nine minutes to go in period number two. Seventeen shots on net for Westchester, nine for Temple. Again, the Owls won both matchups between these teams in the regular season. One at home, four to two, at Westchester, four to one. But when you get to these situations, the regular season, that all goes out the window. It's the best team on this day. We'll move on to the semifinal. Another draw in the neutral zone, 8.49 to go in period number two. Who will be the hero and strike first with goal number one? It's been a story of the goaltender so far. That one nearly turned over. Creasy trying to keep it in the zone, unable to for Temple. But Maglio will push it on net, punched away by Simmerman. That one floated up high. Maglio to kick it beyond the blue line, but couldn't chase after it. Had to wait for Phillips to get back on side. Moving the other way now is Ryan. Trying to send it in front for Smith. I don't know if he expected the pass. Back the other way comes Maglio. Maglio into the slot is shot, and an offside is called again. This time it was Walker going a bit beyond that blue line. A couple of offsides in this period as Temple tried to push it the other way. Just an update as well. Trainer still tending to Robert Werner on the side. He's on a bench now with many trainers up with him in very good care here in Annapolis with his team trainers and also the ones here from Navy. It's Moran sending that one into the corner. Handled by Ryan to the far side. Westchester will try and push it ahead. Vitulo turning with it, knocked away from him. Vitulo in the circle, couldn't get a clean look at it. Moran took him off the puck. It's Emery now. Emery waltzing in. His shot is saved by Galitsky again. Galitsky's already been impressive enough, but I think the thing that sticks out most to me, he's not giving up any rebounds. Everything that he saves is sticking right to him. Nothing is dropping in that blue paint in the danger zone where Westchester can get more wax at it. 
Westchester again leading this game in shots 18 to 10. They've had a majority of the opportunities between the two teams. Here's Irie trying to change that for Temple. Two on one the other way for the Owls. It's Polarski tried to pass it off. Oh, the pass was caught under the pad of Zimmerman and he's able to cover up. Oh, it was an attempted pass across. It got deflected towards Zimmerman and he's able to keep it under that right skate. A heady play by the Westchester goaltender. 7.16 to go in the second period. Still waiting for goal number one. Once again, thank you so much to everyone watching along with the ECHA playoffs on the Navy YouTube channel. There's a high shot over the head of Galitsky. Again, this is the second quarterfinal game of the ECHA playoffs. The number four seed Westchester Rams, the number five seed Temple Owls. In game one tonight, the three seed William Patterson Pioneers took down the number six seed George Mason Patriots in overtime, five to four. We've had just as close of a game here tonight, just with a lot less scoring. Nine goals in that game, none so far today. Here comes Ringwood, lost his footing on the way there, and the first team all-star, Harry Lane, over to retrieve for Westchester. Lane, one of two all-star first-teamers for Westchester. Joey Kubachka, the other. They were announced before the game out at center ice. As Ringwood again will send one down right on net, trying to do anything he can to gain the Owls' possession, and it works. Rudolph into Barrett, fires from the circle, saved by Zimmerman. The Owls have tried that with Ringwood a couple of times now tonight where he stands all the way back and fires one down and each time it proved beneficial for the Owls. Here's Barrett spinning with it. Barrett looking for an outlet and it'll be taken by Westchester. Gaffney will push it ahead. Stonefield there for the Owls, hit up against the boards by McVeigh. And now it'll be pushed behind the Temple net. Westchester will get fresh legs, as will Temple. Under five and a half to go in period number two. Scoreless here in Annapolis. From the Brigade Sports Complex inside the McMullen Arena. Stonefield banks it into the neutral zone where Ryan was waiting for it for the Rams. He'll send it all the way to the opposite corner. Over to get it is McEwen. McEwen lost his footing. Vitulo will backhand it in. Ryan sends it towards the net, knocked away. Westchester controlling. Vitulo sends it in front, and they score! A deflection in front puts the Rams on top, 1-0. Westchester strikes first on the deflection from John McEwen. It took until the 4.53 mark in period number two. We finally have a goal here in quarterfinal game number two. Westchester strikes first, one nothing Rams. With 4.48 to go in period number two, they strike on their 19th shot. It was McEwen with the goal. Jacob Vitulo was the one that put it in front. Nothing new for Vitulo. Had a team high 19 assists in the regular season. Adds another one right there. Four twenty to go in period number two. The Owls trying to respond now. It's Moran into the corner. It's Maglio. Maglio behind the net. Phillips tried to center it in front. Drifting in the blue paint, and now it's taken away by Westchester. Moving ahead with speed is Carter. Drops it off for Smith. Sending it back over for Carter, but bit behind him. And now Temple will take over on the turnover. Some displeasure from the Rams bench on that one. Maglio loses it. Banked in, and 
It hit Walker as he was trying to get off the ice. It'll be off sides. He was on the far side of the blue line. 3.45 to go in period number two. The John McEwen goal for Westchester, the difference so far in this game. Galitsky out of his net to get this puck and he'll send it ahead. Moving ahead with it now is Richmond. Richmond the outlet for Stelasio just missed his stick. They were beyond center ice, no icing on the play. Might have got a piece of Stelasio's stick as well. And now moving ahead, here's Harmon. Harmon fires one, saved by Galitsky. Jake Harmon with a big opportunity. But again, Galitsky standing tall. Back out to the neutral zone, battling for it is Harmon and Owen. Harmon wins possession for Westchester. It's Joey Kubachka firing from the circle, saved by Galitsky. Under three minutes now to go in period number two. Again, thank you so much to everyone watching along here for the ECHA playoffs on the Navy YouTube channel. We'll be with you. For the rest of the weekend as the playoffs move on, both semifinal games tomorrow night, same start times as tonight, 5.30 and 8.30. And then Sunday afternoon's championship game will be right here from McMullen Arena at two, and there's goal number two for Westchester. A centering pass in front, and Jacob Vatulo puts it home. He assisted on goal number one, he scores goal number two. And it's a big flurry over a couple of minutes for Westchester to take the 2-0 lead. The Rams have come to play here in the final few minutes of the second period, and they're not done. McEwen will send one on net, save by Galitsky, and he'll cover up. And look at John McEwen doing what Vitulo did for him on the previous goal. Instead of Vitulo assisting McEwen, now it's McEwen assisting Vitulo. Those two responsible for some big plays here in the second period. Those two goals, the difference in this quarterfinal game. And they score again off the draw of Vitulo. Wiping the ice with his right hand. Oh, a blitz from the Rams here in the final couple minutes. Have a night, Jacob Batulo, an assist and two goals, all in a span of two minutes. And Temple will call a timeout. Head coach Adam Calabrese trying to settle his guys in. Meanwhile, on the Westchester side, head coach Jeff Boperlant telling his team not to let up. They had some opportunities early on. The game sort of lost its pace midway through the second period, but Westchester has certainly picked it back up. Again, the winner of this game will advance to tomorrow night's semifinal to take on the number one seed Navy midshipman. Three goals in the span of just over two minutes for Westchester, a game that couldn't buy a goal for nearly the first two periods, and then Westchester finally blows the lid off. Beating Joey Galitsky, three goals on 23 shots. The Rams with all the momentum. It'll be interesting to see how the Owls respond. Trailing by three in a playoff game. This is what you play for to be in such a big hole. It's interesting to see the response out of this timeout. When you say this is what you play for, this is what you dream of if you're Westchester. 
taking control of a game that no one could grasp a hold of through the first 36 minutes. That one sent back behind the net. Kubachka back there to get it for Westchester. Harmon pushing ahead, skips it to the far side. It's Kubachka. Drops it off for Whitaker. Kubachka. Back to the point, it's McCormick. He'll send one on net, deflected wide. Even out of the Temple timeout, relentless pressure from Westchester. And a big hit up high on Peltier. And now the Owls have a three on two if they hurry. It's Rudolph slowing things down. Rudolph tries to drop it off for Barrett. And the Owls come away with nothing on the odd man rush. Moran slings it to the far corner where Kubachka was waiting for it for the Rams. And he took a peek over his shoulder trying to see if he should outlet one down. Instead, he opts to keep possession for his team. And now Westchester will just dump it in, get a change. Sauer with 90 seconds to go in the second period. All three Westchester goals have come in the period. Walker for Phillips. Phillips spinning with it, back behind the net. Mike Walker chasing after it for Temple. 1.13 to go in period number two. Smith couldn't control. Instead, it'll be Moses pushing it along the boards for Westchester, and now the Rams move it ahead. There is one minute left in the period. Up ahead for Smith, trying to move it back, and the Owls couldn't quite get a handle on it. 50 seconds to go in the second period. Sauer ahead, they had to wait for Phillips to get back on side. It'll be backhanded in by DiMatteo as Now it's centered by Phillips, knocked away. Sauer looking at a big collision up near the boards. And now all of a sudden, Westchester the other way. The shot is saved by Galitsky. It was the ever dangerous Jacob Fatulos had a piece in all three goals in this period. But Galitsky able to keep it at just a three goal deficit for Temple. 12 seconds to go in the second. Ryan Bichetsky. Trying to make something out of nothing for the Owls, and he'll send one just wide of Zimmerman's cage. Three seconds to go, two, one, and that will do it for period number two. An explosion from the Westchester Rams here in the second. Puts them ahead, three, nothing. One goal from John McEwen, two from Jacob Batulo. 20 minutes left between the Rams and the semifinal tomorrow night. Don't go anywhere, we'll have our second intermission, and don't be alarmed if the connection buffers a bit, restarting the system to limit buffering for the third period. Once again, it's Westchester 3, Temple nothing as we head to the third period here in the ECHA playoffs. Hello and welcome back to the ECHA quarterfinals here in Annapolis, Maryland for a Friday night broadcast. It's the number four seed Westchester Golden Rams and the number five seed Temple Owls. It was scoreless through one period and then scoreless through the first 15 minutes of period number two, but Westchester went on a scoring surge, three straight goals in two minutes to take a 3-0 lead. One off the stick of John McEwen and two from Jacob Vitulo. 20 minutes separate the Rams from a semifinal date with the Navy midshipman. But the Temple Owls still have time to make different plans. We're underway here in the third period as the Rams will control early on. 
Something to note in the first period, we had six or seven penalties in the second, not a single penalty. Things cleaning up in that department. We'll see how it all evens out in period number three as a long outlet pass from Matt Ganey intended for Michael Irie goes long down the ice, icing against Temple. Westchester out shooting Temple 25 to 12. Chad Zimmerman hasn't had too much action in his cage, but again, he's done everything he's had to. He's made all 12 saves. Meanwhile, Joey Galitsky has given up his fourth goal. The Westchester Golden Rams continue there to pour it on. Four unanswered goals for Westchester. This one for Captain Joey Kubachka. Four nothing Westchester in the blink of an eye. Really in about five minutes of game action. They've scored these four goals. One for McEwen, two for Vitulo, and now one for Kubachka. Westchester goal scored by number 26, Joey Kubachka. Assisted by number seven, Brennan Whittaker. Time of the goal. That one's lifted into the center. It's handled initially by Delano. His attempt to put it in is blocked. Back the other way comes Barrett for Temple. Barrett into the slot, moved off the puck nicely. Harry Lane, the all-star, the first team all-star for the Rams making the play. That one drifts into the slot and <laughs> Lane wanted nothing to do with that puck. Sends it all the way down to the corner. It's an icing against Westchester. Temple will take over in the offensive zone. It's C.J. Phillips against Joey Kubachka on the draw. Kubachka comes away with the puck. Tries to hit Whitaker in transition. Instead, it's Sauer coming away with it. Michael Walker now. Temple trying to dig out of a big hole. Turnovers won't help that cause. It's Carter putting it behind the net for Westchester. Moses into the corner. Trying to look back up for Moses. That's picked off easily by Maglio. Alex Maglio maneuvering into the corner for the puck. Pushed up against the boards by Moses. Maglio able to get it back to the point for Reed. Sends one in, it's blocked by his teammate. Mike Walker tried to get a deflection on it. And now a hand pass is called against Bladen Reed. So that'll take this draw out to the neutral zone. Just over two minutes gone by here in period number three. The Golden Rams with full control here as we wind things down in the second quarterfinal game in the ECHA playoffs. Joey Galitsky gets it out of harm's way to Reed, then to Gane. It's Richmond trying to push in transition and now It'll be banked way down the other way. Icing called off. The first man there is McVeigh. Another turnover for Temple. Emery lifts that one side of the net. But Emery's the first one back to it. He's tripped up. There's a penalty. Emery went down. It'll be a trip against Temple. We'll have to see who it is. After a second period with no penalties, we see our first here in period number three. It's going to be Blake Richmond heading back to the box for the Owls. Two-minute penalty for Blake Richmond. Westchester a chance to add on to what's already a four-goal lead. Tripping, 
It's Jacob Vitulo, two goals in this game. Westchester trying to add on here on the power play. Icing is called. The Westchester bench thought they got to that puck first. It shouldn't have been called, but it will be, and that puck will be taken out. Now the ref's discussing something. Looks like it'll be at center ice. Unsure of what that whistle was. Still 128 to go on the Westchester power play for the Blake Richmond trip. That one will be sent all the way around the boards. McEwen waiting for it on the near side. Emery with it. And now the Rams have control. A minute 12 on this power play. Peltier. The far side, they go in front of the net, tic-tac-toe, and Emery puts it just wide. Vitulo, so dangerous, weaving behind the net, looking for an outlet. Up to Lane, Peltier. To the corner, missed Vitulo. McEwen's the first one there. He's pushed up against the boards by Stonefield. Ian Stofield trying to drain some clock. 43 seconds on this power play, and it's sent all the way down by Moran. Fresh skates out there for both sides. As we're under 16 minutes to go in regulation, 30 seconds to go on the Westchester power play. Pushed along the boards, kept in by Whitaker. Whitaker to the high slot. Kubachka, 14 seconds on the Westchester power play. Kubachka to the far side. Moving with it is Moses to the near side. Whitaker, his shot is saved by Galitsky. Able to hold in any rebound. And there's one second left on the Blake Richmond penalty. He'll be out of the box about as soon as this puck is dropped. Have to wonder if Westchester's gonna be a little bit conservative, and they are. Good call by Carter McCormick, pointing Tristan Ryan back towards Richmond, saying, hey, Watch out just in case they try an outlet. Westchester wins the draw regardless. Oh, and a massive hit on Reed. That's gonna be a penalty, clear as day. And now, Simmerman will head to the bench. It'll be six on five for the Rams. And then they'll have a power play right out of the last one. The Rams trying to move it ahead, also trying to eat some clock. Under 15 minutes to go in the third period. McCormick. Moving in, McCormick sends one at a tough angle. Deflected up into the netting and out of play. But that'll put Westchester back on the power play in what's already a 4-0 game. The Rams looking to extend the lead. The Owls looking to keep the deficit at just four. And this will be Reed heading to the box for that big hit behind the Temple net. The Owls still do not have a shot in this third period. They have only 12 shots in the game. 29 on goal for Westchester. 25 saves from Joey Galitsky for Temple. And Chad Simmerman, again, can't forget about him on the other side. 12 saves on 12 shots. Out to the point. The Westchester power play unit out there again. It's Peltier. Who, Emery, pardon me. In front for Vitulo, looking for a hat trick. The puck couldn't get clean off his stick, and Emery controls. Vitulo in the slot, trying to work through a couple of defenders. Here's Peltier, flipping one on net, looking for a deflection, deflected wide by McEwen. Flipping that one, another pass intended to be deflected. Went to the corner, under 90 seconds to go on the power play for Westchester. 14 minutes to go in the third period. Vitulo into the circle, his pass across went wide. It'll drift all the way out where Peltier has no problem going to get it. Temple trying to get fresh skates out there, so Westchester goes right back in. Moving in, and is the shot is saved by Galitsky from Peltier. One minute and one second on the Blade and Reed penalty remains. Westchester still five on four. 13.48 
to go here in the third period. The Rams have outshot the Owls 32 to 12 here in the ECHA quarterfinal game. The five seed Owls, the four seed Rams. Winner moves on to face number one Navy tomorrow night. Right back here at the Brigade Sports Complex. 40 seconds on the Westchester power play. Behind the net, working with it is Smith. He'll try and wrap one around on Galitsky and he's able to cover it up in front of the net. 13-19 to go here in the third period. 32 seconds on the power play for the Rams. It'll be Kubachka on the draw against Rudolph for Temple. Kubachka wins it for the Rams. Vitulo waiting. Trying to draw in the defense. Goes up top to Ryan to the far side. It's Kubachka. Behind the net for Smith. It's 15 seconds on the Westchester power play. Back up for Kubachka at the point. The Rams are content with taking all the time in the world at this point. Already ahead by four. Centering pass misses Kubachka. And we're back to even strength hockey as Reed exits the box. And it's a hand pass called on Reed. So we have another whistle. 12.41 to go in the third period. 4-0 Westchester, 33 shots to just 12 for the Owls. Quite the opposite of what went down in the regular season. Temple won both regular season matchups, but again, as mentioned earlier, all that goes out the window in the postseason. Westchester certainly proven that tonight. Ryan Buczewski will send that one in. Behind the net, it's Gaffney. Ahead for Seaman. Into the corner, Stonefield corrals it. Temple trying to garner any opportunities here in the final frame. Still struggling to get any shots on goal. Again, 12 for the game, none here in the third period. Emery for Westchester, moving across the blue line. Emerson Emery. Here's Ganey, banks it. Moving ahead is Rudolph. Rudolph into the corner. Swings all the way around for Temple before turning it over. McEwen will just backhand that one in for Westchester. Galitsky trying to get it out of harm's way. Just over 11 minutes remain here in the third period. It was tight early on, a scoreless first period and a scoreless first 15 minutes of period number two. But since that point, Westchester has broken the game open. Four unanswered goals, which is the difference in this game, building a high hill for the Owls to climb. Emery with it. They get it back to Emery, backhand in, and he scores! Goal number five for Westchester. This one off the stick of Emerson Emery. His first goal of the postseason. Four different goal scores for the Rams so far. Emery being the fourth, Jacob Matsulo has a pair of goals. John McEwen and Joey Kubachka have the other two for Westchester. The Rams have blown it wide open here in period number three as Simmerman will cover that up. To reference the regular season one more time, in the two matchups between the teams, Westchester had a combined total of three goals in those two games. But tonight, when it matters most, they put five on the board. And, 11, 
And now just 10 minutes away from a date with the Navy midshipmen tomorrow night. The number one overall seed, the team hosting the entire ECHA postseason here at the Brigade Sports Complex at McMullen Arena. Into the corner now, Westchester trying to control. It's Moran for Temple. The Owls trying to at least get out of their own zone cleanly, and now they will. It's Stonefield. Stonefield across the blue line. Rips one wide of the net, waiting for it, and moving the other way now is Harmon. Harmon met by a trio of Temple defenders. The puck's taken away from him by Ganey. And now they'll move it ahead. Here comes Harmon. Harmon putting it between the legs of a man and just wide, and Galitsky hops right on top of Harmon. Joey Galitsky with a lot of contact. Still on top of Harmon, and now some extracurriculars going on, the exchanging of some business cards between the two teams. The referee's gonna have to sort all this out. You'd have to think it's some frustration boiling over for the Owls trailing five nothing. And if you're just joining us earlier on in this game in the second period, Robert Werner exited with a left leg injury, the extent of which is unknown. But fortunately, he was helped off the ice by his teammates and trainers and has since left the bench that he was on, assuming further care. Hope he's all right. One of the most important things at the end of the day. And amongst all that, that's going to do it for Joey Galitsky. He will leave as Steven Glick will enter for the Owls. An impressive career for Joey Galitsky here at Temple, likely coming to an end tonight. And he'll take a walk back to the Owls locker room. Certainly amidst a lot of frustration. As it stands now, there's one owl in the box and one ram in the box, but the referee's still a lot to discuss over at the scores table. Nine thirteen to go in this third period. It's Westchester five, Temple nothing. The five goal onslaught from the Rams began with about four minutes remaining in period number two. The game was still scoreless up to that point, but John McEwen broke the tie with a goal. Jacob Vitulo added a couple more. Joey Kubachka put in another, and now here in the third, Emerson Emery tacked on another. Those last two goals from Kubachka and Emery coming here in the third period. Some high spirits on the Westchester side, just nine minutes away from a semifinal matchup tomorrow night. Again against the Navy midshipmen is now the referee's given some explanations to some of the guys. Matt Guinea over there for the Owls. Emerson Emery taking it in from a Rams perspective. as we still wait for all the laundry to be folded here on the ice. Thirty-four shots for Westchester, 12 for Temple. The Owls still without a shot here over halfway through this third period. And for the time being, four Owls skate onto the ice in front of Steven Glick.
So there's a penalty up on the board against Joey Galitsky. Joe Stelasio will go and serve it. Two minutes against Galitsky, so it'll be another power play for the Rams. Already ahead, 5-0, but not afraid to add on with a five-on-four man advantage. Moses for Kubachka behind the net. Pass intended for Carter. So what's come out of all that? Jacob Irie and Jacob Creasy and Michael Irie have been ejected from this game. A shot in front, just wide of the net for Blade and Reed. So Jacob Creasy, Michael Irie ejected. Joey Galitsky, a two minute penalty, but he's on the bench now for Steven Glick. 8.20 to go in this third period. Julian Rudolph moves it ahead for the Owls. Taking it across, Rudolph to the far side. Just missed Brandon Barrett. And it'll move into the corner. Kubachka, one of two first team All-Stars for Westchester playing in this game. Defenseman Harry Lane, the other one. Both were announced before the game. Peltier will slow things down for Westchester. The pace is certainly halted here with under eight minutes to go in the third period. The energy in the building lightening up as we approach 11 o'clock. Vitulo sends one on net deflected wide. Shot goes wide of Glick. Westchester waiting as we're about to go back to five on five. Stelasio comes out after serving the Galitsky penalty. And that one shot saved by Glick. 7.05 to go here in the third period from McMullen Arena at the Brigade Sports Complex. Winding down the final seven minutes of this game between the number four seed Westchester Rams and the number five seed Temple Owls. Again, the winner will move on to play number one seed Navy tomorrow night. The top team in the league waiting the longest to get their game underway. They'll play at 8.30 tomorrow night. The other matchup set is number two Villanova against number three William Patterson who won tonight. That game will be at 5.30 tomorrow night. You can catch both semifinal games right here on the Navy YouTube channel, the ECHA playoffs home for the next two days. Five on five hockey on the ice as Reed will send it ahead for the Owls. Stolen away by Phillips, centers it in front. The Owls couldn't get a clean look at it. Maglio will try and center it, poked away by Simmerman. Seaman now across center ice. He'll dump it back behind the goal. Here comes Moran. Into the slot. A trio of defenders meet him and knock the puck away. Oh, a nice move over on the far side. Westchester centering it in front. The shot. Whitaker stopped by Glick. Some well-deserved stick taps for Steven Glick coming off the bench cold, making a nice save. Phillips for Maglio. Over five minutes to go in the third period as Maglio's pass misses Gane and heads all the way back down where the Owls have to retreat for it. Under five minutes to go here in the ECHA quarterfinals. After this, it's semifinal time. We've already got one matchup, William Patterson and Villanova likely seeing the second with Westchester and Navy. A dominating performance for the Golden Rams tonight. 36 shots in this game. 
to just 12 from Temple. They haven't allowed a Temple shot in the third period. We're over 15 minutes gone by, and now that might change. A penalty against Westchester as Hunter Ringwood got tripped up. At least here, a chance for the Owls to go out on a positive note. A chance to one, control possession. Two, have the man advantage. Three, maybe put home goal number one. It's Gordon Delano heading to the box for the Rams. Two minutes on the Temple power play. It's Baird up at the point. Stonefield in the slot. Rudolph sends it across, tried to get it on the stick of Barrett. It bounced to him. He'll slow things down. Barrett rips one high and wide. Rebound shot is sent up over the net. That'll wrap all the way around and back into the Temple defensive zone. One twenty-eight to go on the Temple power play. 3.50 to go in regulation. On the far side now, it's Barrett trying to retrieve for Temple. He's pushed off the puck by Peltier. Back to get it is Harry Lane for the Rams. Lane gets it ahead. Emery trying to waste some clock and rips it all the way down where Glick is waiting for it. Under 3.30 to go in regulation, under one minute to go on this power play for the tripping penalty against Gordon Delano. Back the other way now, the Rams shorthanded opportunity and instead of pursuing a goal, John McEwen will waste some clock and then flip it back in. 35 seconds on the Temple power play, three minutes to go in regulation. A big Temple turnover there with numbers going the other way and Smith now will slip it all the way out. The energy dropping off a bit here for the final few minutes. Saw tensions flare for a moment on the far side. But overall, it's a resounding Westchester win. Ringwood from a tough angle, saved by Simmerman. Now it wasn't entirely on net. I'm interested to see if they give Temple a shot there. The Owls still without a shot and they're gonna count that as a shot. It was a tough angle from Ringwood, but Zimmerman did have to grab it. So an impressive Westchester stretch comes to an end. Temple gets one on net, and that one will be cleared all the way down as the penalty is over, back to even strength. Five on five hockey. Out of the box is Delano, got a good look against Glick. 2.13 to go in regulation. Centering pass in front, knocked away, and now it'll be Stonefield. Westchester just two minutes and some handshakes away from advancing to the semifinals. The two favored seeds will go on to win today. The number three, William Patterson, Pioneers and the number four seed, Westchester Rams, both taking care of business as that one centered in front for Walker, knocked away from him. 90 seconds to go in regulation. Reed knocked away from him in traffic. Phillips will send it all the way back where Ganey goes to get it. One ten to go in regulation, and the Owls are off sides as Rudolph beat Barrett into the zone a bit too quickly. In a game that no one could find the back of the net in early on for the first, really, 45 game action minutes, once Westchester put one by, a crack become a massive hole 
And it turned into five unanswered goals. That's the difference in this game. As we're under 60 seconds to go here at McMullen Arena. In the Brigade Sports Complex, the home of the ECHA playoffs for the 2023 season. We'll have coverage of the two semifinal games tomorrow night right here on the Navy YouTube channel. McEwen lifts it in. Teams trying to just run out the clock at this point as Gane sends an outlet ahead. The Owls still trying to put something together. Buczewski turning, gives it back for Gane, winding, firing, sending it wide. 15 seconds in regulation. Spinning shot from Walker wide. Gane tees one up. That's into the glove of Chad Simmerman. The 14th shot he saved tonight. It won't be a shutout where he had to save a high volume of shots, but he did exactly what was asked of him. Had good defense in front of him, and he made every play that he had to. Five seconds to go with 4-3. A shot is saved by Simmerman with one second left. Tried to throw it away to keep that clock moving. It stops with exactly 1.0 on the clock. They'll send it down, and this game is over. The Westchester Rams move on to the ECHA semifinals to take on the number one seed, Navy Midshipmen. And that will end the season for the Temple Owls, the number five seed in the ECHA. Played it tight through the first half of this game before Westchester ultimately ran away with it and ended up winning 5 nothing. That'll do it from McMullen Arena tonight. The two quarterfinal games over. The two semifinal matches decided. It's Navy and Westchester and Villanova and William Patterson. Those two games tomorrow night. Make sure to catch them right here on the Navy YouTube channel from McMullen Arena. That'll do it for us, for our entire crew. Matt Rainier, Chloe Guessing, Olivia Benner, Charlie Schultz, I'm Luke Milai. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good night.